Hi, this is Professor Zygmunt again with CTS 560 Online. Let's assume that you've finished a Gaussian geometry optimization and frequency calculation for one of these molecules, like ethane, and you'd like to use Gauss View to get some of the information about the properties of the molecule. And I've done a little bit of this in previous versions, uh, previous videos, but let's go ahead and uh, show this again for ethane for one of the calculations similar to what you uh, will do on this week's assignment. All right, so I'm going to open an existing file, file open, assuming I've already done the calculation, so a Gaussian output file. I've got a number of these because I've done the eclipsed calculations and the staggered calculations for all of the three methods that I've asked you to do uh, on the homework. So let's look at, for example, let's look at the staggered version of ethane. So I click on this, and remember when you're opening an output file that's an optimization, you should click the read intermediate geometries because you want to see the individual steps of the optimization. So here's the viewer window, and you can see it's an eclipsed version. If I rotate it, all right, now it opens by default into the optimized structure for which the energy is a minimum. So this is the true equilibrium structure that this method calculates. But if I want to see the intermediate structures, I can click and scroll through step one, the initial structure I gave it, two, three, four, five. And you can see that if the initial guess at the geometry was pretty close, there's not much more variation that goes on. Here it only takes five steps to reach the fully optimized geometry. Now, uh, I showed you in a previous version how one can uh, add symbols like this so that you can see the, whoops, and once again, by mistake, I clicked and added a methane molecule to the window, so I'm going to change to the question mark I hear the inquire mode. So I can add labels, but one of the things I want to show you how to add is charges. And so I'm going to deselect the, or sorry, deselect the symbols so that there's room for charges to display. So let's say that you want to know roughly what the atomic charge uh, for the different atoms happens to be. And uh, in this case, the bonds are all fairly covalent kinds of bonds, uh, so that the charge is shared, uh, certainly between the two carbons, quite equally. But the, uh, in the results menu, we can pull down and click Charges, and it will display on here, both in the form of false color, and then numerically, what the atomic charges are. Uh, and this is a little bit busy. Uh, the color sometimes can be helpful, but I'm going to deselect the color. And then you can see that the default font is quite large here. So it makes it a little bit hard to read these numbers. So if I go to View and then Display Format, there's a number of options that I can change. And one of them is for the text. So 36-point font is kind of big. Let's change it to 24-point. And we'll see. Now, it's a little bit easier to read. So what you can see for each of the atoms using an approximate scheme that partitions the electronic charge uh, to various atoms in the molecule is in units of a, of a single electron charge what the charge of the individual atoms is. So each of the hydrogens in this ethane has 0.2, a positive 0.2 of an electron charge, and the carbons have a negative 0.601 of an electron charge. And we will sometimes look at these charges, which are called Mulliken charges, in order to get some idea about the chemical reactivity of different parts of a molecule. So that's, that's how we can display that. Uh, I'll close out of that so that the charges will... Nope, they're still there. All right. So what I need to do is go back to Results, Charges, and click Close or Cancel. So something else that I can get from the results menu is a summary of the calculation, which tells uh, the type of calculation that it was, the method, the basis set, the, the final energy of the optimized structure, and then some more information about the nature of this structure, including something called the dipole moment, which we may refer to in the future. So that can be helpful. Uh, the other thing that you can get from the results menu, of course, are the vibrations, the vibrational frequencies. And you will be looking at these uh, in this week's assignment, at least for the eclipse structure, you'll be looking at these, but it's always interesting to look at them and to animate some of the modes to see the kinds of vibrations that a molecule can undergo. So let's just pick one of these out at random. Uh, let's look at some of the higher frequency vibrations. If I scroll down, 
and some of these in the 3200 wave number vicinity are almost certainly uh, stretching modes where the carbon-hydrogen bonds get stretched. But we'll see. Let's see if that's right. So I click Start, and yeah, we can see, sure enough, that this vibration includes uh, stretching of carbon-hydrogen bonds in a fairly symmetrical or perhaps asymmetrical way. Uh, if I increase the frames per cycle and decrease the displacement, then I can see something that's a little bit slowed down uh, that might be easier to interpret. But while this is vibrating, I can change to other modes of vibration that are part of this frequency calculation and see all of the different ways in which the atoms within this molecule can vibrate in sync with one another. And so there are mostly uh, the higher frequency modes are stretching, bond stretching uh, ty types of vibrations, but then you can have bond bending modes. Those tend to be the ones I'm showing right now a little bit lower in uh, the inverse wave number, which means they're lower in energy. And then you can even have lower energy modes like this that tend to be uh, not even so much bond bending, but, but wagging of the bonds. Uh, and if we go to the lowest one, we see that this is a torsional uh, vibration, that it involves the rotation of the ends of the molecule around the carbon-carbon bond. But let's cancel and uh, go back to the main menu here with Gauss View. So those are some other things that you can see uh, you can, if you want to, view the file itself from within uh, a window, but often the output files are so large that it's easier to look at those from uh, the terminal itself. And at least that's what I tend to do most of the time. So uh, those are some uh, ways that you can use Gauss View to uh, display different features of the calculation. And uh, hopefully that will be helpful as you do more of these calculations and try to get uh, the most information possible from them.